Hey everybody, this is Fran from the 5 Minute Modeler. It's 8 degrees outside and so I'm heading to the basement where we're going to have a special edition of the 5 Minute Modeler. Today we're going to talk about fencing. Hey, wait a minute, not that kind of fencing. I'm talking about chain link fencing. In a previous video, I compared a couple of the manufactured fencing products available. Gold Metal Models, Etch Brass, and Woodland Scenics product. I'll put a link in the notes below to the episode. As I mentioned in that video, I'll be constructing my own fencing using some fairly inexpensive items, saving us a significant amount of money. The uh, above products range in price from around $15 to $20 US for about 180 scale feet of fencing, while what we're building will cost around $10 and will create close to 400 linear feet. On my layout, there's an oil chemical storage facility that receives loaded tank cars. I currently have a gate going across the rails that must be opened before cars can be delivered. I need to place fencing around this complex and that's what I'll be building. I first start with a scrap of wood. This happens to be a 1x4 that I had laying around. Any wood will do. Using my straight edge and utility knife, I carved a groove near the top of the board. I made a couple passes with the knife. Then using my scale ruler, I marked the line 6 foot and 8 foot from the top line and carved similar grooves. This gives me the ability to create fences in either height. I then marked off vertical lines in 10 foot increments and carved grooves for the fence post. Some of the videos I watched talked about using piano wire to create fencing. I've never used piano wire, however, as a musician, I do have plenty of guitar strings. These are made from steel, and so when I change the strings, I take the old ones, clean them with isopropyl alcohol, and they're ready to use for a variety of needs on the layout. If you play the guitar, you probably already know this. However, if you know someone who plays guitar, you can ask them for their used strings, as they typically just throw them away. Just make sure to clean them. If you don't know anyone, you can find inexpensive strings uh, on the Amazon for around a dollar a piece. The strings are about 36 inches long and come in varying widths. You'll want those between, oh, say, 0 0.008 inches and 0 0.020 inches. Any variety of these will work, as the difference in gauges likely won't be evident in the finished product. I decided that I wanted a six foot tall fence for this industry. I take one of the guitar strings and place it in the top groove. I use some painter's tape to hold it in place. You can use Tiki Tack as suggested by Luke Tellen, which works well too. I then laid the second wire in its position and taped it down. I take another piece of wire and begin to cut it into one inch and one and a half inch segments until I have enough for the post. I slide each short segment into the groove and under the two horizontal wires. In some cases, I need, may need to tape these down as well, so I do that. I use the longer pieces at the ends and wherever I feel I need to plant the fence, generally about every 30 to 40 scale feet. It's okay if these short wires go a little past the top rail too, because you can trim them later. Now that all of the pieces are in place and secure, I'm going to use my soldering iron to solder these joints. Once the iron is nice and hot and tinned, I begin at one end and start soldering the joints on the top section. Then continue soldering the joints in the bottom part of the fence. Once you've soldered all of those sections, let it cool. In about five minutes, you can gently lift the fence skeleton out of the wood. At this point, if you find any loose joints, just re-solder as necessary.
Depending on the type of fence you're creating, you can also add support bars for corners and gates. They aren't necessary and you don't always see them, but they do make a nice touch. Add the appropriate length of wire from the top of the end or corner post down to the opposite side as in these examples and solder them in place. Another money saving element here is the use of brass mesh screen. One source is Scale Scenic Brass Mesh, but there are others available in larger sizes and quantities available on Amazon and other places. The Scenic Scenes is nicely finished and costs around $8. I found this at my local hobby shop while looking around their detail parts. The Scale Scenics Mesh is about 3 inches wide by 6 inches long. After marking the mesh for the 6 foot height, I used my straight edge to line up the marks. Then, using a slightly sharp utility knife, I cut through the mesh. I end up with a very clean cut, and for this section of fence, I need two lengths, so I repeat this. I had pre-painted this mesh a light gray, as you can see. I don't recommend painting it first. I painted this actually with a bunch of other items I was painting, but in retrospect, I leave it unpainted until the entire fence was complete. Anyway, I'm going to be using a CA glue to secure the mesh to the skeleton. I begin by placing dots of glue on the joints that are at the highest point, generally the side that has the post soldered to the horizontal rails. I lay the piece of mesh on the skeleton, carefully lining it up. I find if I place small weights like nuts or washers, etc., they provide enough weight to hold the fence in place until the glue dries. Now you can paint the fencing. Fencing is generally made of galvanized steel, which has a light gray look to it. You can use rattle can spray paint to do this or any other manner you prefer. You can also weather the fencing with some light rust colors to add a little interest as I did here. It likely won't be noticed, but does add to the effect by toning down the gray. Well, here's our finished product and it's looking pretty good. We're ready to plant it and that'll be our next step. In order to plant the fencing, we have to drill some small holes and I'm gonna use my pin vise with a small bit to uh, drill the holes for the fence post. It'll take a little bit of time to align the, the fencing uh, in the right order and I'll use a needle nose pliers to, to uh, bend it in the appropriate places to get it to fit. Once the holes are drilled, I start to place a bit of Elmer's glue into the hole in order to secure the fencing. You may not need to do this, uh, but I do it because sometimes the fence does pop out of the holes and I want it to be more secure. Once the fence is placed into the holes, I use these little screwdrivers to hold it in place until the glue dries. I'll add some ground foam to the base of the fencing and just to get it to blend into the scenery a little bit more. And that's about it. So I wanna thank you for watching this extended uh, edition of the Five Minute Modeler. In closing, here are a few shots of the scenes on my layout where I've used chain link fencing. Again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on another 5-Minute Modeler.